Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. I had to do one on this topic, folks. I've been getting lots and lots of email about it. This one's about the end of VBScript. What is VBScript and how does it affect your Microsoft Access databases? Well, we're going to talk about that today. So this is something I've been getting a lot of emails about over the past week or so. So I decided to chime in with my two cents about it. I just pick one email. Marcus from Rockville, Maryland, one of my platinum members. He said, oh my God, Mike Wolf just released an article. This is about a week ago saying that VB script is dead. Does this mean that all my access apps are no longer going to work? Well, no, not really, but let's talk about it. So first of all, if you haven't read Mike's article yet, go read it. There's a link. I'll put a link down below you can click on. He goes over it in a lot more detail than I'm going to. I'm just going to give you the basics. Also, while you're on his website, make sure you subscribe to his email updates because he publishes awesome articles. He releases something almost every day, just kind of like I do. He's more of a, a written form. I'm more of a video guy. But he keeps his pulse on what's going on with Access a whole lot more than I do. I get my news from him and from Access Forever. <laughs> He's one of those resources that I read every time I see it pop in my inbox. But now, for those of you who don't know what VBScript is, it's basically a tool that lets you write VB, VB-like code and execute it directly in Windows, kind of like batch files. Remember those from DOS, right? In the early days of like Windows 95, those batch files. I still use batch files all the time. But VBScript is kind of like batch files plus one, kind of. Right, you can you can write VB related code, and in fact, I even wrote a little program a little while back called the uh, Access Watchdog, and all it does is it sits there on a loop and it just watches your Access database, right? And if the database locks up for any reason, this is for like if you're using it as like a database server, um, it'll reboot it. And that whole thing was written in VB Script. It just sits there in like a little DOS window and it loops every ten minutes. It just checks and does what it has to do. So essentially, VBScript is like a little scripting language for Windows. You may have never even used it yourself, which is okay. I don't use it that much myself either. But one of the problems is a lot of developers do use VBScript from inside their Access VBA, right? For example, in one of my developer lessons, I teach you how to use the file system object, right? This guy right here, you can use it for getting information in files and folders, you know, file sizes, dates they were modified, that kind of stuff. And that's part of VB script. So it's unclear as to whether or not this stuff will be going away once VB script is depreciated. There are other methods for working with files in VBA directly, but the file system object is far superior. Now, one thing that Mike did point out in his article is that VB script is going to transition from being automatically installed with Windows like it is now to something called feature on demand. And what this means is as a developer, if you want to use VB script on a machine, whether it's yours or your clients or wherever the database is going, all you have to do is go into the turn windows features on and off settings and you'll find VB script listed in there. It's not yet, but it, it will be. So you should be able to do this at least for a while. I'm guessing at least a couple of years. I don't know. Don't quote me. You know, I don't have an insight at Microsoft. Those guys, Mike Wolf and access forever. Those guys will tell you before I do, but I'm just giving you the lowdown. It's not going to disappear immediately. It's going to be around a little bit. Um, Microsoft has to give their developers time to update their applications. But bottom line is in the near future, if you have to go in here to turn VBScript on, there's a way to do it. Now, I've also seen some different articles and even a few videos mentioning that VBA might be going away because Microsoft has decided to remove COM objects from the new version of Outlook. Com objects are basically how you can have office applications talk to each other, right? You can have access, send an email through Outlook, or you can have it generate a Word document or all kinds of stuff. I cover some of this stuff in my lessons. Now, Outlook is one of those programs that if you can control it from something else like VBScript, then you can do bad things. Like a hacker can get in there and, you know, access your contact list and send everybody spam. And it looks like it comes from you. Back in the day, I used to get all, I used to get this all the time. <laughs> That's one of the reasons Outlook has those annoying security pop-ups that come up from time to time. They're there for a good reason. It makes it difficult to automate stuff, but they're, they do more good than harm. And of course, there are other methods, like you can use Gmail or you can talk to an SMTP server directly. I covered that in my email seminar. But 
The bottom line is, even though they're tightening down Outlook, I don't think that Microsoft is going to be getting rid of VBA anytime soon. That's just my opinion. But Microsoft has legions of developers that have built countless applications using VBA for decades for, you know, Access, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, all those. And if they were just to get rid of VBA in the near future, they would have a mutiny on their hands. They would lose so much of their following, me included, that if they did that, who knows what would happen. So I'm going to say for now, it's safe. Ten years from now, who knows? But I'm sure Microsoft will come up with a replacement product that's just as good as VBA when the time eventually arrives. I personally love VBA, but I also loved Coco Basic on my TRS-80. So who knows? And of course, there are other options. You can write stuff in a regular programming language like C++ or VB.net or whatever you like. If you really like scripting languages, you can learn PowerShell. I've been learning this myself. Um, I'm not an expert in it right now, but I'm, you know, I've been learning it. And hopefully, eventually, I'll make some courses on it once I get good enough. But there will always be options. Don't panic. And as Mike pointed out in his article, ChatGPT has been very helpful in putting together some sample PowerShell code like what you see right there. I said, give me a hello world script and pff, there it goes, right? I've been actually using it to convert some of my VB script over to PowerShell. So don't be afraid to use AI tools for that. Just make sure they work, verify them because I've been doing a lot of work with OpenAI and ChatGPT stuff lately and some of the responses I get have been kind of weird, especially some of the pictures it generates, but double check everything, double check your code. <laughs> So there you go. Bottom line, go read Mike's article, subscribe to his updates, stay informed. You'll get news right from him and from Access Forever. I'll put a link to them down below as well. Tell Carl I sent you. And remember, don't panic. VBA isn't going anywhere and VB script probably has some time, at least a couple of years before it even becomes depreciated to a feature on demand. All right. And bottom line is keep learning. Keep learning something. All right. Obviously, learn Access, learn VBA. Learn SQL, but learn something new. You know, learn PowerShell, grab a book. I don't know. Eventually, I'll have some lessons on that too. But the important thing is you keep learning something every day. I try to. I have a, if it's a bad day for me if I don't learn something new. That's one of the reasons I love doing these videos is because even if it's a topic that I think I know a lot about, I still go online and research it and find out what other experts have to say before I make a video. So, so there you go. There's my digested version. Go check out those other resources. You'll find links down below. That's going to be your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something and don't panic. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, 
including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.